Okay, Mastermind with Neil Schwartz and Weston Bim from Baltimore, Maryland area. Good afternoon, young man. How are you today? I'm, I'm doing great. I wish I looked as good as you today, though. Well, thank you. That's very, very kind. We're going to talk about that for another half an hour. And then we'll <laughs> on that subject. Good job. When you turn my age and anybody says something nice about you, you pause and you listen. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Weston, so the BIM dynasty continues. Yes, sir. And you'd save so, the best for last. Uh, good point. Um, I wanted to go in a little different direction to start with today. I, I don't know if I asked this necessarily of your dad and your brother, but um, let's go back to you guys were raised in a real estate household, but that wasn't necessarily the direction you wanted to go. Am I correct? That's correct, actually. Yeah, your brother the same too, right? Yes. Okay, got it. So for you, uh, what age did you say, okay, this is cool. I want to do this. Uh, let's go down this street. Uh, I said that when I was really young, I actually begged my dad to take me to father-son work day with him. I don't know if it was a combination of I wanted to do it or I just want to get out of school. Uh, but uh, it was something I really wanted to do. And it's something that I always enjoyed because I saw the life my dad was able to provide for us. And I always have the vision of being able to provide my kids the same life, if not better. So from, from a young age, I did see myself doing it. And alluding to what you were saying there, my dad actually, and he'll admit it, where he tried to push us away from this direction because it's such a ebbs and flow lifestyle where if you can't handle the stress of it, it's going to be a very rough life and a very rough career. If you can't handle having getting $50,000 this month, no dollars this month, $100,000 this month, no dollars next month, it is going to be very rough. So for him, he actually pushed me towards getting a uh, full-time corporate job, which I actually did to begin with. What kind of job was that? So I was actually a data analyst for uh, Total Wine and More to begin with. Uh, so I was at their corporate office in uh, Bethesda, and then I actually had a great job opportunity with North of Grumman. Wow. And how old were you then? How old was I then? Um, More or less. 24, 25. Okay. So you had graduated college, correct? Yes. Um, and you were out um, being recruited by the corporate world. Yep, exactly. So... Uh, for me, I went out and started with a full-time job first, and then uh, when I was trans uh, moving from Total Wine more, trying to decide if I wanted to take the job offer at North of Grumman or not, is kind of when I made the switch. Okay, and but so you never worked for Grumman. You went to work in the real estate business, if I'm understanding it. Correct. So what switch then? I mean... Um, what, when you were working for the wine company, what kind of money were you making annually, more or less? Before taxes, 50000 Okay. All right. So is that, is that kind of a corporate pay level for a job in your basic area with your skills? Uh, fresh out of college, yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And you jumped right into real estate instead of... Um, Grumman, why did you do that? What was the job offer at Grumman Financial? Uh, that was going to be $80,000, $80, $90,000, somewhere in there, starting. Right. So a big jump. Yes. Yeah, big jump. A guy can make a, a living and, and support a family in your part of the world there? Oh, absolutely. Off that, you definitely could. And then there was room to grow from there. Got it. Okay. All right, cool. What happened? What changed your mind? For me, it was the fact that when I was at Total Wine and More, I started taking on more and more responsibilities because I was catching on so quickly. And I went to them and said, hey, I want to be here long term. What can we do to keep me here longer term? Uh, basically alluding to, can I get a pay raise of some sort? And it came down to the fact that the answer was no. So then I started looking for a different position. North of Grumman came up. 
And then as we're switching there, that's when my dad and brother were restarting Winning Edge. And for me, it was something I always wanted to get into real estate for. I had my license at the time, but I was just dabbling in it, just cold calling every so often for my dad and brother, just along with them. And for me, I saw this perfect opportunity where I could jump into it full steam ahead. Got it. Well, you did that and you're doing great with it. Thank you. So congratulations. So a question I didn't ask your brother, any sibling rivalry, rivalry going on there? <laughs> From time to time, it, it it's hard for me not to compare myself to him, which is something I'm constantly working on is not comparing myself to others because how, I, how I'm going to operate is going to be a little different from, from my brother. My personality is a little bit different from him, and it, it's always going, going to be a little bit different. So it's the constant challenge that I have is to not compare myself to others. Okay, good. So it's, I've been working on very uh, readily not to do that anymore. Are you older or younger than your brother? Older. Older. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so was it he that was talking to your dad originally? Or um, was, there, was there some conversations where you, they weren't keeping you out of the conversation, I guess, first of all? No. Uh, no, they, they really weren't. Grant jumped into it before I did. So Grant had been in the business for a year and a half, two years full-time before I went full-time. Got it. Okay. All right. Why did you wait to jump into it full-time? I think it was because I dedicated so much time to getting my degree to going towards being a data analyst, working towards being doing information systems management, what my degree was in. So I have a... Uh, bachelor's degree in business administration with a concentration in uh, information systems and computer, computer and a minor in computer science. And I also have my master's of business in analytics and IT. So you're an analyticals analytical. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Whoa. And that takes, that, that tends to take us a little bit longer as an analytical than it is to make a move. What, um, what's your dad? Driver, right? Uh, internal analytical. Internal, interesting. Internal yeah, and, analytical. And I'm, a, I'm an external analytical where I need everybody's opinion before I make a decision. Got it. Okay. And your brother? Uh, internal as well. Internal analytical. Got it. Good stuff. All right. So you're working side by side or at least in the same proximity in the house? Yeah. If I yell loud enough, my dad can hear me in his office. Uh, if you yell loud enough, he's on the screen. So. <laughs> He, he's taking notes, copious notes right now. Good stuff. Um, okay, so you started in the business. Uh, your brother's going in one direction. Your dad's going in a teaching direction, as I recall my conversation with him. He just wanted to give you the a good work ethic. He wanted to give you a good direction. He wanted to give you um, a sound uh, foundation, correct? Yes, correct. And then each of you have a, a role to play uh, in this. You went after what kind of business at first? Oh, the second that I joined the joined in, my dad threw me right at expires for sale by owners. I mean, okay. so for me, the majority of my business is still expireds and old expireds. So okay. I'd say that's probably 50% of my business. Now, expireds and old expireds are difficult. You got to know the scripts and dialogues and you know, know the market. How long did that take you to master? It took me a little while and, and I'm still learning. So for me, it, I I have the scripts uh, internalized everything. I could recite the uh, expired scripts word for word without it in front of me right now if I wanted to. But for me, it's making it my own now where it sounds like me where it's a conversation versus sounding scripted. So for me, I've practiced that, practiced, practiced it to the point where I'm now in a role play group where I'm role playing uh, every single day of the week. And on top of that, to make myself better, I've also joined a listing presentation role play group where I'm doing that three, uh, two days a week with an additional third role play to improve that as well. I hear from agents all the time that they, they want to do that, but they can't find it. Kind of sounds like you and your brother have either found those groups or they've found you. Do uh, you have to go to work really hard finding that stuff, or is it out there? You're just looking for it. 
it's a little bit of both. I went to our coach and said, hey, is there some, someone you have the role plays or role play group they have? And uh, he got me in touch with the person that runs this one. So uh, I I got involved with them that way. And then my mastermind group, one of the guys in my mastermind group got me in touch with the person for the listing role play one. Got it. Great. Excellent. Very, very cool. So, and then the previewing of the properties, how much of that do you do and did you do when you started? This is your third full year in business. Am I correct? Yes. Right. Okay. So is previewing property, knowing the inventory important in the business that you're doing? It is. And it's something I need to do more of. What does that mean? Um, means instead of being on the phone, pounding the phones for four and a half, five, six hours a day, getting out and actually seeing property and actually getting in front of people and do a little more door knocking. And how does that help you as opposed to just sitting on the phones? Oh, well, I, if someone calls me saying, hey, or I cold call them and I, they ask me, hey, what do you think my property is worth? There's a couple of different neighborhoods that I do business in where I can say, do you have this, this, and this? And they go, well, yeah. Well, your property is probably worth right around here. Got so it. for that, it gives me expert, makes me seem as the expert to know exactly what's going on in the marketplace. And you don't have to say, let me call back and research. Exactly. Got it. Got it. Good for you. Excellent. Good stuff. So tell me what you ran up against as a young man. Let's say you're 27 right now. How old am I? Uh, 28, getting ready to turn 29. 29, an old person. <laughs> <laughs> I feel older than I am. I'm, I'm sure you do, but you're not. So get over it. <laughs> um, so 28, 29 years old. Three years ago, you're 24, 24 25. That sound right? Yes. Right. Okay. You started off in the business. What'd you make the first year? First year, I made eighty-five thousand. Okay, and you grossed eighty-five thousand dollars, right? Yes. Or no, uh, eighty-five. I'm sorry, netted. Uh, how many deals was that? More or less. That was like six deals. Six. Okay, got it. All right, and then the following year. Following year was following year. I made one hundred and fifty. And, and what'd you do different from the first year to the second year? Sounds like you did what, 14, 15 deals the second year? Uh, second year, I did 25. Okay. Got yeah, it. So, so what was different, it was, it was a combination of things. Number one, most important, I started listening. Where, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what does that mean? The first year, I was basically doing my own thing, where I wasn't really listening a whole lot and uh, looking back at it, now that I'm more, more mature about it, I can let my ego go. Uh, I know that I didn't listen as well as I should have. I didn't follow the steps my dad was giving me. I didn't follow steps that my coach was giving me. And I just flat out didn't listen. I, I just did my own thing. So let's talk a little bit about that, because that's not uncommon for people at most ages, but especially at your age. Um your dad's giving you a certain amount of advice. Your brother and you are talking all the time. Are you both working and bouncing stuff off of each other? Uh, bouncing stuff off, but uh, it came down to the fact that, again, back then, I I, I wasn't listening a whole lot. You were, So do you think it was an older bro brother issue? I don't know. I, okay. I don't know. I, I definitely look up to him because... He's doing fantastic right now. He's exploded. He's he's doing a great job right now. And for for me right now, it's figuring out how do I catch up to there and, and be more productive. Right. So that, okay. that way we can make the business as it should be. Okay. Right. So are you open for some coaching? Please. Get your ego out of the way. Yes. Okay, good. Um, okay. So, so you were, you were challenged that way. So your ego was in the way as an individual, a, a 28 to 30 year old who has a big ego anyway, because it's like, I got this. Don't, you don't have to give me any information. I got this. And, but you're, you're working right next to your brother or in the same 
area. And it sounds like he's doing a little bit better. And you, you put you drag it down to it's you guys ego, he's listening. This is what I understand. Could be wrong. He's listening and executing, and you're not. Is that what's going on at the that time? Yeah, back then that's exactly what it was. He was listening and executing. I was not listening and not executing. Do you have any other friends in the real estate business that that's going on with right now? No one that I can think of off the top of the head. Okay, good, good. You're around a lot of smart people. Good stuff. Well, I think that's great. I uh, I know that um, that you guys are figuring it out and working on it every single day. So congratulations. Um, superpower. What's your biggest superpower? You think? I would say for me, it's probably empathy and patience with my clients. Oh, tell me about patience with the clients because it kind of sounds like your ego might be able to, might be getting in the way a little bit. So where does the patience come in? So the patience comes in by being able to listen to what, what their needs are, what were their goals. They, they might, I have uh, past clients of mine where I followed up with them for a year, year and a half because they had stuff go, going on with their lives. And there's stuff that you just simply can't control. So one of the folks I have under contract right now, I I've been following up with them for a year and a half because they were going through some personal challenges. The second that it was resolved because I listened, I was patient, I was empathetic, provided service. The second that they were good to go, they immediately gave me a call saying, hey, Weston, uh, how soon can you be over a raid list? Awesome. Great job. So that's what you mean by listening. Yes. Awesome. What? And, I, and I'd say that's probably the biggest shift I've made where all of a sudden my business is growing because I'm listening more. And that's one thing I, I still need to improve upon is my active listening, which as you were mentioning earlier, which is just knowing my scripts, knowing my dialogues, the more that I know them, the, the more I can actively listen because everything's internalized. I know how to respond. Okay, great. So now I don't have to ask the question, how do you do that? <laughs> So we have it now recorded. Excellent, really cool, good stuff. You know, it's great. I, I said this to your brother, I've said this to your dad. It's an absolute pleasure talking to such bright young men dedicated and determined to accomplish great things in their careers. Um, is your mom on here? No, she's pro probably in the other room uh, trying to take care of a few things, make sure that everything's going to a smooth settlement along with our assistant, Callie. Oh, that's great, good stuff. So I, I, need to, I need you to try and explain as a teacher coach mm -hmm. to the agents here that are in the 20 to 40 range on how listening has helped you grow your business. Uh, can, you, can you articulate that a little bit? Yes. So... For me, I want to be a constant learner because I know there's always going to be somebody on my heels trying to be better than me, catching up to me. And there's always another agent out there already doing better than me. So for me, I want to learn from those people how they got to where they are, because at the end of the day, they're the ones that, that have executed are the superstars. So I would be an idiot not to listen to them. So just learning how to actively listen and then figure out how to incorporate everything. And then the sooner, I, the quicker I can do that, the quicker I can grow. Okay, good. All right. So uh, new agent, brand new, right off the right off the buses. Okay, brand new in our business. How do you help give them some advice to uh, jump on it right now and make some great things happen? Uh, number one, get into coaching, uh, whether it's Mike Ferry, Brian Buffini, whatever it may be, I prefer Mike Ferry. I, I'll be honest with you, I was with Brian Buffini to begin with. That, that's who I was with. And well, that would be that that's another interesting story you could share with me, how that went over in the family. Uh it was it was I'll be honest with you, it was my dad's idea just because of my personality. I'm more I'm more people oriented, where if it, he thought it fit my personality better, I thought it fit my personality better. And Overall, from doing that, I learned really quickly that it, it, if you're a new agent, it doesn't produce. You need to be in 
You need to get on the phone. You need to make the calls. You need to make the expires. You need to call it for sale by owners. You need to get on the phone calling because there's more people out there that you don't know than you do know. And at the same time, that's the one mistake I made that when I first started, I was actually scared to call my friends, my center of influence, those folks, because calling some random expired asking for business, they're a stranger. I don't know them. Who cares? And for me, it's a mentality thing just to get over is calling my friends, calling my family and every everyone going, hey, I don't want to be a secret agent. I want to make sure I'm here as a real estate resource for you. Do you already have an agent that your family recommends or someone that you trust as a real estate resource? And going down that route. And I saw friends of mine buying real estate, rent, renting real estate or, or their family doing stuff. Uh, and that's one thing that I know I needed to do from second one that I did not do, which is a shift that I'm making right now where I'm, I'm helping a couple uh, friends of mine that are purchasing real estate. One of my best friends just referred me to someone to help, help them with real estate. So that's one major shift that I've made recently that I wish I'd done earlier. So I would say overall, get on the phone, start list, listening as I should have. Uh, which my career would be accelerated even further right now if I just did that from year one. Uh, get on the phones and call your sphere are the four things that I would do. Got it. Excellent. Good stuff. So um, what do you want? What's your goal for this year? Uh, this year is 40 transactions, and that would give me uh, around 300000 in income. Okay. That'd be great. And if you would have listened more, you would be 50 to 100% above that, right? Exactly. Got it. Okay. So are you going to listen more? Absolutely. <laughs> it doesn't pay in your house not to listen, right? No, <laughs> exactly. Good job. Excellent. Okay. Questions for Weston. Questions for Weston. Who's got something what wants to ask him? Just jump in or uh, put your hand up. Neil or Ni yeah. uh, Weston? Yes. Nigel? Who's that, Nigel? No, it's Kamal. Kamal, okay. Um, well, what is what do you do to keep yourself mentally strong? Because in this uh, real estate business, I have a son that is on board. And what do you keep uh, to keep you mentally strong and to... So you positively are moving forward your goals. Uh, so every day when I'm prospecting in the morning, I'm listening to positive, powerful, motivational uh, videos, recordings, whatever it may be. I was actually listening to a old uh, Mike Ferry tape earlier today where he said, you're either uh, practicing to succeed or you're practicing to fail, which hit, really hit home with me because I'm, I'm practicing to succeed right now. So for me, I know I'm doing all the actions that I need to do between role playing, game on the phone, game my hours per day, game my contacts. And I know if I take those actions every single day, I'm going to get the, get the results. I, and I'll be honest, I had a very slow start to the year, but because I have the comp, uh, uh, I've been compiling all those little actions right now, all of a sudden everything's starting to pick back up again. So just staying positive. Uh, stick, sticking to your schedule, as my brother talked about during his, his talk, just sticking to your schedule, just listening to those items. And overall, I, I make sure I make, make myself laugh every day. So uh, I try, during my breaks, I try to listen to stuff that's funny, stuff that makes me laugh, uh, just keep myself positive. Uh, I'm re reading good books all the time. So I'm just doing everything to put good, positive stuff into my head every single second. For you. Excellent. Good stuff. Thanks. Question. Good question, Kamal. Thank you. Nigel, did you have a question or was that? Oh, but but also that add on that. I'm sorry, Kamal. So the other thing, if he has any past clients that he's already worked with that has a letter of recommendation or something like that for him, if I ever get down, I have my letters of recommendation sitting right here. If I need a little pick me up, I just read one of them. Okay, good. Excellent, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, we have a question in our chat box. What's the listing presentation group that Weston named? I, I don't know if you can name that. Uh, um, I, I, I don't know if there's a name for it, but if you know Nancy Peterson, reach out to her. Okay, good stuff. Um, let's go with Juan Carlos. Um, 
Juan Carlos, you're promoting an investment property. Okay, we'll catch yes, that. Sir. We'll catch that later. Good, good use of the chat box, though. Thank you. Good job. Other questions for Weston, please. I also like have a question for so, Weston. Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, so. Juan and then Robert. Go ahead. Thank oh. you. No, no, yeah. no. You first, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, more than that, I want to appreciate his sincerity. He's very, very sincere how he opened up with uh, some of the things he's been uh, struggling and, and I can relate with the uh, wisdom, you know. A lot of the times when we, I started not, not listening, a lot of time was, is wasted. So thank you for sharing that, man. That was very nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. Okay, Robert. So, so I have two questions. Number one is you're obviously young in an old business. I mean, Mike tells us that the average age of a real estate agent is 53. So my first question is, how do you overcome that when you're on presentations looking as young as you are and still showing that, hey, I have the experience, I have what you're looking for in order to be able to sell your high-end property? Uh, I have a little bit of an unfair advantage being in my dad where – if it's a little more of an expensive property, he will co-op on it with me and, and help me out a little bit from time to time. And, and I'll be honest with that. I, I have a little bit of an un, unfair advantage in that way. And at the same time, I've got my scripts down to a point where when I'm on the call, some people even go, real quick, how old are you? So for, for me, it's knowing the scripts, knowing the dialogues to act, to be the expert, be professional, which is why when I set the appointment, I've gotten that pre-qualification stripped down so well, I sound like the expert. I've, I've come prepared. So when I sit down for that appointment, I can rattle off, hey, here are your goals. Here's what's going on. Are you ready to sign? That comes with a lot of practice, right? Yes. So having that listening role play group has been super, super helpful. And ju just as a little humble brag, the last five listings I've taken, I'm in and out in 30 minutes. With a with a sign sign uh, with a signed contract. Good for you. That's fantastic. Good, excellent. Go ahead, uh, Savannah. Hi, Weston. Thank you so much um, for everything. Your your talk was really great. I wanted to ask you what were your top five sources of income. Sure. So uh, for me, right, I had it up. I was actually just looking at, it, but if we're going in reverse here, so. Uh, because I made that shift uh, in the last year and a half of uh, referrals, COI, past clients, that's number one right now. New expireds is number two. So they're pretty much head to head, uh, then old expires uh, for sale by owners, and then just, just listed, just sold, and then general cold calling. Thank you. Hmm? What do you think number of contacts a week you're making, buddy? Uh, I can tell you right now, actually, as a good analytical. <laughs> So let me see here. So on I had no doubts that he knew the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I, I, I wanted to throw him a trick question. <laughs> so so on, on average, I'm prospecting uh, a little over four and a half hours a week. I'm making about uh, 33 contacts a week, 33 contacts a day. So four and a half hours of prospecting a day, right? You said, yeah. you said a week. So you're oh, right. I apologize. Thank you. That's uh, okay. That's okay. I just want to make sure that that everybody's getting the right numbers. So four and a half, five hours a day. And because from your perspective, what else have you got to do, right? Exactly. Okay. The rest of the systems are set up. Mm -hmm. So that's good. And your broker did it for you. And your most of the agents on this on this call, we're their broker and we do it for them. So they have the same leg up as you do. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, good job. And then um, uh, the contacts are how many contacts at the end of the week, more or less? Um, more. Let me see here. I think I just did, did one recently. Uh, let me see here. Uh, last week, I made 190 contacts last week. Okay. So it's what we say is, you know, get close to 200 contacts a week and you'll make a nice living mm -hmm. and you'll make 300,000 plus this year. And the first year and a half or two years, you didn't listen. Exactly. 
And if I did, I'd be way past that now. It, I find, you know, nobody believes this, not that you're lying, don't get me wrong, but nobody believes when the truth really does come out and people really say, look, I just didn't do what I was supposed to do, but I failed at a decently high level, right? Yeah. I, it's hard to believe because we have agents on this call that are having trouble getting 20 contacts in a day and tell me they've talked to everybody. They've done everything. There isn't anything less they can do, okay? Or anything more they could do. Honest. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, go go ahead, Miriam. And then Thank I'll you, Western, for your time. Um, I would like to know, are those uh, contacts from your database or what's um, the other sources that you um, use for the uh, contacts? Every, so I'll run through my schedule every single day when I'm making contacts. First contacts of the day, expireds. So brand new expireds. Then I call expireds that came off the market within the last week. Uh, going back in time right now, I'm calling old expireds. And then I go back even further expireds because those are starting to list again. Mm -hmm. uh, once I'm done there, uh, I'll usually jump in the for sale by owner. The new for sale by owners, I'm starting to go into older for sale by owners again. Uh, and then if I... Since today is my day where I call my follow-up, call my follow-ups today, and then and any just listed, just sold. And then now we're in the afternoon because I'll, my next appointment is at five. Uh, if I didn't have, if I don't have an appointment, I'm back on the phone prospecting. So before I hopped on here, I'm I was doing just sold calls around a listing I just sold. Thank you. Yeah. I had a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, Weston, do you do both door knocking and phone canvassing or phone calls? Uh, I'm starting to work more door knocking in, into my schedule. Okay. So what, what percentage would you say is phone calls compared to door knocking right now? Uh, phone calls significantly more. Uh, I, I would say it's probably 80, 20, phone, 20% 20 door knocking. Oh, okay. Door knocking, and, I need to work in more. Okay. One final question. Are, is, are you still getting an allowance from your dad? No. <laughs> I have a question. Nigel, how far back do you go on those expireds? Are you asking Nigel or are you asking me? Yeah. I'm sorry, Winston. <laughs> Hello. Hey. So uh I'm going back as far as uh 2017 right now. Okay. Does that help, Ruth? Yes, and how okay. successful um, are you on those old uh, expireds? Uh, pretty successful. So I would say last last year out of the business I did, that was 20% uh, of my business was old expireds last year. But a lot of them are coming from people that they rented their homes. So that's where a lot of those old expireds are coming from, where uh, I'm calling people that had rent their property are now going, I'm done with this. Okay. Are you finding you. That, that's a really good question, Ruth. I, Weston, before I go to Savannah, are you finding people that own non owner occupieds are getting a little bit more fed up with them today than maybe year? Well, you don't know years past, but maybe your dad would get that feeling. Uh, it, it depends upon the person, but I would say a lot of them are starting to get fed up where it's slowly starting to come in where it was people that during COVID that they were trying to jump on a home and then they rented theirs out, thinking that'd be a good idea. A lot of them are now going, this is a terrible idea. Uh, I need to get rid of this thing. Got it. Got it. So anyone that bought a property six months prior to COVID up to two and a half years, three years, based on what you're saying would be, and it's not owner occupied, a really prime target right now. Oh, absolutely. So a lot of the homes that I'm selling right now are vacant. Anybody hear what I just said? Nobody's going to pick up on it. Okay, go ahead, Winston. <laughs> so a lot of the properties I have right now are, are vacant homes. So I just, let me see here. Uh, yeah, two out of the four homes I have under contract right now are vacant. The other two, they have their next home under contract. They're moving to it. So for, for me, that's where a lot of it's coming from. And it's, uh, yeah. So a, a lot of it right now is uh, 
But as you said, during COVID, people rent their property out and they're just, the lease is coming to an end and they're trying to decide, do, do I sell this thing or do I hold on to it? Am I upside down? Am I not upside down? So seeing, can, can they even get out of it? Because a lot of people during that time refinanced, kept it, and now they want to sell it and they can't get rid of it. Yeah, or now that they can get rid of it, they're getting rid of it. Yeah. They can't get rid of it because they owe slightly too much money. Yes. Right. Got it. Good. All right. Thanks, Winston. Uh, Savannah. One more question. How are you tweaking your, if you are tweaking your like opening liner for older expireds? Uh, for for o- older expireds, uh, we can role play real quick. Uh, ring, ring. Hello. Hello, is this Savannah? This is she. Hey, wonderful Savannah. This is Weston. I'm giving you a quick ring today because I had saw your property at 123 Banana Street. had came off the market about, about a year ago at this point. I was just following up to see if you had any interest in that property sold while the market's so strong right now. Oh, you know, I haven't, I haven't thought about it. Is now a good time to sell? Now is an absolutely great time to sell. If you were to have sold last year, where are you moving to next? Got it. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Yep. Just he doesn't sound he doesn't sound stoppable, right, Savannah? Exactly. So the client's either going to go with him and learn what he's got to say, or the client's going to, that's it. I'm not interested. Both answers are perfect for him, mm-hmm. right? Yep, okay. I, what else? Either way, we... I'm asking. When are you plan? When are you planning on moving? Either way, I'm asking that. Right. Mm-hmm. Gonna get gonna get his questions in one way or another. Good. Any That's other right. questions for Weston? Yes, this is Tyrone. With that time frame that you just mentioned, did you say it was six months to two years before COVID and vacant? Uh so let me let me look at our list here. I think that? I threw those numbers out. Um six so, months before six so we, months before COVID. So we have uh we have everything from 2018 till today in our uh, file. 2018 till today. Yep. But if you wanted to shrink it down, Tyrone, like we do with the two bedroom, two bath condo kind of stuff. Right. Then what I would do is I would go properties that closed escrow six months prior to March 2020. Close six months prior to 2020. March of 2020, because the truth is, none of us hit the gas pedal until April and May. A lot of the, a lot of the agents were sitting there going, the what happened? Okay, mm-hmm. but a lot of people went out and really turned and burned and got a bunch of business right then. And then I would look at properties that closed escrow um probably at the end of november 21 that sound right weston yeah i would say about right november december okay. 21 right. and, now the, and now the biggest thing with the rentals is that when i'm calling them i'm calling them six months pro, uh basically three times a year so it's six months for the lease supposed to come to an end, four months for it's supposed to come in, and the month that's supposed to end. Because as I've been calling through them, the ones that had listed before I could get to them, it was somewhere in that time frame. Hmm. Okay. So that's that's the non-owner occupied for rent by owners. Okay. Yes. Is what he's referring to there. And that's the ones that you've been calling on for the last three years that you now have a list of all of these people who you have their cell phone number for. um, And they either own one rental or two rentals or they own an owner occupied home. Now the vacant ones become a little more problematic, right Weston? No, I actually enjoy the vacant ones. No, I, when I say problematic, a problematic oh. to identify. Oh, yes. Right. Sorry. A little more problematic to <laughs> identify. But if you can identify them as vacant, those those jump to the top of the list. Well, a lot of those rentals I'm calling, they're, they're old expireds where they, they couldn't sell. And because they couldn't sell, they rented it. So that's, that's a lot of them as well. 
Okay, got it. Cool. Very, very good. Okay, let's unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves, please. All right, good job, Weston. All right, 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 right. Yo, 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 from Oceanside. Uh, hey, uh, so Weston, what we do right now is we're going to kind of go around the room, ask the agents what they learned from you, what, what the ideas did they pick up, et cetera, et cetera. I know with working with your dad and your brother, you guys have <clears throat> hard stops. So if you've got to go, we understand. But if you can hang for a few minutes, that'd be great too. Yeah, I, I got 10, 15 minutes. Okay, excellent. Okay, so what did we learn from Weston today? What did we learn? Once you go on the phone, so, it so Weston, <laughs> listen. Conference? Oceanside. To listen. Oceanside. Oceanside, what'd you learn? Uh, call them expired. Call them deep. Call them often and um, keep calling them. Because they already said they wanted to sell it one time and it wasn't right. And now it's the best time. All right. Good stuff. Thank you. Excellent. Good reminder, everybody. Okay. What else did we learn today? Yeah. Calling for rent by owners all the time. All rent the time. by owners. Always. Great source of business. Thank you, Adriana. Kamal, yeah. how about you? Uh, when Listen. the student's ready, the teacher will appear. When the what? When the student's ready, the teacher will appear. That we is, have a way, we have a different way of saying that around here, right, Neil? Yeah. <laughs> when the student is ready, the fairy will appear. The <laughs> <laughs> <My> fairy. <laughs> that, that's what Neil told me when I first yeah. got here. <laughs> when the student's ready, the fairy will appear. And boy, will he appear. Take your credit card and he'll never be seen again. Because he has your money back guarantee. Guarantee. He gets your money, you're never getting it back. Nobody got that. Goodbye. Bye. I let's got it. I thought it was hilarious. That's right. Let's move right on. Move so, right on. Listen, well, listen wanna... to your coaches and you'll get by a lot faster. Oh yeah. Oh, Come I on. want everyone, I want everyone to write that one down. Yeah, write that down. Circle it and put stars. Yeah, in. no. I'm gonna use that on coaching calls next week. So yeah, uh, what I got out of it, Neil, was what I hope everyone picked up on, Savannah asked him a question and he said, all right, let's just role play it. And just right off of a whim, he just got right into the script. No ums, no ahs, no pauses. So my question for all of you that want to call expires, if you can't do what he did just on a whim like that, don't call. He started going, like I knew exactly where he was going. He was going down the expired script, no matter what. His opening yeah. tweak was a little different, but I knew where he was going to go to. But he didn't. He didn't hesitate to jump right into role play. He didn't um or ah or avoid the question. He was just like, "Let's go. I'm ready to go." If you can't do that, don't call expires. And if you can't do that, practice, 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 practice until at three o'clock in the morning. If someone called and gave you a role play, you could jump right into it. Yep. That's the skill level you have to be at. And that's what he's at. That's. I hope everyone picked that part up. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good point, Robert. Okay, Ruth, did you have your hand up? Huh, okay. All right, who else? Who else got something? Uh, they want Neil, to share? Neil Go I, I think when he put the phrase uh, listening, I put, I put it all together. Listening, learn the skills, and ex execute. Listen, I learn. Love, I love where he put those three things. Yeah, listening, learn the skills, and execute. Perfect, exactly. Got to nudge that guy behind you, huh? Juan, I just wrote that down. I, I appreciate you putting it together like that. I'm going to steal that now. <laughs> it's funny. I saw four or five people uh, move when you said that, Juan Nuno. Good job. You know, you're a philosopher. Who is? Me? You. you. Oh. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> Good I thought was that well, I don't want to say it. <laughs> Denise, did you have something you wanted to share? Yes. Um, towards the beginning, there was a line that he said, uh, I was I'm so excited about being in real estate uh, because I saw the kind of life my dad could provide for his family. And that, that really hit home to be able to provide. Exactly. Exactly. They are a, a, a gold standard in, uh, 
in the organization that I know of as being that kind of a family. We have a number of them. It's really a, a good thing. Not a lot of catting around and garbage in this organization at all. Um, good observation. Thank you. All right. What else do we have? What else did we learn today? I heard listening as Mark? a major. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of the most important words that so many of us ignore or forget about is the word listening. Uh, and look how much money it cost him. But fortunately, he learned at a young age, so he's going to make a big make it up in the long run. All right, what other... what did what did you get out of it, Neil? You know. Uh, from the really, thank you for asking, really from the, right from the very beginning, it struck me, and I've never done this, you know, I've, we've interviewed almost 200 people since we started this, and I've never had an opportunity to interview a family like this where they're, they're all different, you know, and by his own admission, you know, Weston says, look, I didn't do what, what I was supposed to do in the very beginning, and it cost me a few hundred thousand dollars and that stops now. I'm not doing that. Um, and my ego got in the way. How many times, how many people do we have, Robert, whose ego's gotten in the way daily, let alone yearly? You know, they just, it gets in the way. I, I just, these are, these are great points. You know, don't let your ego get in the way. Your ego is not your amigo. Um, and hang out with um, with like-minded people. I think that's another point here. That's always a great reminder. So good stuff. Unmute yourselves, everyone. Unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves. Let's go. Let's give another big round of applause. Thank you. 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 Robert, who's up next? All right. So we got a fun filled afternoon. We got some open mic with Frank, Caesar, Emily, Mark, and Freddie. And then at 3 30, I have a class that was requested by some of our agents. How we're going to convert online leads, sign call leads, things like that at 3 30. So that is our afternoon, everyone. So we still have a lot of fun still to go. All right. Sounds good. Again. Hey, do, do, yeah. do you guys see the property that I put there? Yes. In case anybody has a somebody interested, it's a beautiful property. All right. For an Airbnb, somebody has a great investor or somebody who wants to make some money there. How how much is it? Seven hundred and eighty thousand. And how big is the lot? Uh it's close to eight thousand, seven thousand five hundred, something like that. And um, has it got it like a pickleball court on it or something? Yes, it does have a full goal. Of course uh, it does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a mini golf course <laughs> with a full goal. <laughs> and a great pool, jacuzzi. Well, the thing is, India, and this part of India is one of the parts that you can do an Airbnb. They have no restrictions or anything like that. All the Coachella festivals and everything comes through here, so they run like it. What is the, uh, is there any association fee on this? Nope, no HOA. Can you, uh, can you forward me the link with pictures? Absolutely, yes. It has uh, a pickleball court, really? It does. Uh, uh, well, it has, it's a, it's, a, it's a mini golf course with a four hole. Yeah, pickleball is the one with the- Pickleball's gonna buy it for himself, have... watch. He said pickleball, he's gonna get it for himself. Yeah. It doesn't have pickleball. No, it, it does not. A, it's a mini golf course. It has a mini golf course, the, the pool and the jacuzzi. And then well, I'm has... glad we cleared that out because if yeah. I took my wife for two hours on a drive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll send it to you. It's just a mini mini golf course. Oh, okay. Got it. All right, you guys. Fantastic. You guys. Good job. And take it go. away, Robert. All right.